On today's episode, seven weight loss resources. Welcome to the Calorie Conundrum Podcast with Coach Strick. Join us as we expand the weight loss conversation to beyond just calories and dare to ask the question, why does eating less and exercising more sometimes not produce the desired results? Here's Coach Strick to discuss this calorie conundrum. Hello and welcome to the Calorie Conundrum Podcast. This is Coach Strick. And on today's episode, I'm going to be talking about seven free or cheap weight loss resources that you can use to lose weight. All of these resources are simple, but when combined, can really help to keep you motivated and on track to achieving your weight loss goals. If you have listened to this podcast in the past, you know that we often discuss many things that affect your weight loss other than the traditional calories in, calories out philosophy. Things like your sleep, food quality, toxins, and your microbiome. But today I would like to talk about how to use some of the more traditional weight loss tools in more holistic ways. So let's go ahead and get into the seven weight loss resources. The first resource on the list is a body weight scale. I know, I know, the dreaded scale. The problem with the weight scale is many people often let the scale dictate how they are feeling. Meaning, if it shows a large decrease in weight, these people are happy. But if the scale shows an increase in weight, or no change in weight, or sometimes even a small decrease in weight because it wasn't enough weight loss, they are sad, angry, or disappointed. If we let the scale and the other items on this list be what they are, tools that provide data for us to use and less like determining factors for our value as a person, they can be powerful resources to help us achieve our goals. Yes, the scale doesn't tell the whole story, but the more data we have at our disposal, the better decisions we can make. One way to help eliminate the confusing up and down weight fluctuations during a weight loss journey is to use a weekly average. So with a weekly average, you keep track of your daily weight for 7 days and at the end of the week you add up all 7 days and then divide by 7. Then, instead of comparing the day to day weight fluctuations, you compare week to week averages. The advantage to tracking your weight this way is that you can have days where your weight increases on a day-to-day basis, but is actually decreasing overall. These increases could be due to any number of reasons, including issues with sleep, body water, stress, and so much more. Weight loss is a journey, so don't let slight increases or plateaus in weight discourage you. The information we get from our body weight is often useful, but the scale isn't perfect, and that is the reason why there are seven weight loss resources on this list. Which brings me to weight loss resource number two a body fat measurement. Being able to measure your body fat percentage and lean body mass can be extremely valuable when it comes to your transformation journey. The main reason for this is that when you gain muscle and lose fat, you can literally look like a completely different person but weigh the same or similar to when you started your journey. This is because muscle is more dense than fat which causes you to be smaller but not lose much weight. This is why tracking only your body weight is a bad idea. The best ways to measure body fat and lean body mass are sometimes less convenient but well worth it if you are serious about losing body fat. The best ways to measure your body fat mass are DEXA, calipers, and hydrostatic weighing. Hydrostatic weighing or using a tub of water to determine your body mass was the gold standard until DEXA came along and is not commonly used by the average person today. DEXA is a form of x-ray traditionally used to determine the density of our bones, but it is also very good at determining body fat mass and lean body mass. Although your local gym probably doesn't have a DEXA, they are becoming more and more common, and if you do a simple search for DEXA in your area, you will probably be able to get access to one. Body fat calipers are another good option, but require someone that has experience using the calipers to get your measurements to ensure accurate results. One last method that is becoming very common in gyms and more forward-thinking healthcare settings is that of a bioelectrical impedance device. These devices are getting more and more advanced, but the bioelectrical component on your bathroom scale may not be that accurate. These at-home bioelectrical impedance devices can be good to track overall trends in body fat, but I wouldn't rely on them for exact information. There are some medical-grade bioelectrical impedance devices that are shown to be pretty accurate, But what most people don't know is there are certain requirements that need to be met or these results can be off. For example, if you try to use one of these devices after working out, the numbers will be way off. 
So just make sure you are following the recommendations for using the device and doing the measurement at the same time and day and under the same conditions. The third weight loss resource is the tape measure. Similar to measuring body fat, the tape measure can give you invaluable data when it comes to your weight loss journey. As stated earlier, you could be getting smaller and your weight could be staying the same. Without this kind of feedback, and if you were only relying on your body weight, it would seem like your weight loss plan was failing. When the weight stays the same or isn't progressing as fast as we hoped or expected, often we give up or jump from plan to plan. If your weight is steady, but all your clothes are falling off, that is a good indication that the plan is working and that you should keep going. Measuring the hips and waist is a good place to start, but you could also measure the chest, arms, legs, calves, wrists, etc. Take measurements at regular intervals and use the information to help guide your plan. The fourth weight loss resource is photos. Similar to the body fat measurement and the circumference measurements, pictures help to complete the story. Often when we lose weight, it can seem like nothing is changing and we can get discouraged. But being able to compare a picture of you three weeks ago to a picture of you today can clearly show that what you are doing is working. The three-time Mr. Olympia bodybuilder, who is often deemed as having one of the most aesthetic physiques of all time, Frank Zane, says he rarely weighed himself and relied predominantly on photos to achieve his physique. Also taking side and back shots can help you get a different perspective that a mirror can't give. These first four resources for weight loss, the body weight scale, the body fat measurement, the tape measurements, and photos will give you a tremendous amount of information you can use to help determine if your plan is working. This information can help keep motivation and confidence high knowing that you are in the driver's seat and not just a slave to the scale alone. The fifth weight loss resource is that of a food journal. Tracking your food has many different benefits, whether it's with a paper and pen or digitally. Writing down what you eat can be a very powerful practice in self-awareness, and I believe that this act alone is enough for some people to lose weight even without counting calories. Another benefit to tracking with paper and pen is the opportunity to journal your mood and symptoms throughout the day alongside the food you are consuming. Oftentimes, our mood affects many aspects of our food consumption, including how much, when, where, what type, etc., and can also affect our digestion and our ability to utilize our nutrition appropriately. Tracking symptoms can also bring awareness to how certain foods or environments are affecting us. Tracking digitally via apps like MyFitnessPal or others has its own benefits. Often these apps make tracking what you're consuming more convenient, and a plus is our phone is with us most of the time. Another benefit of the digital tracking methods is that they make it easier to determine the nutritional breakdown of the food that you are eating. Things like amount of calories, macronutrients, sugar, and salt are often listed in digital food journals, which makes evaluating and adjusting these amounts easier than if you were just tracking with paper and pen. The sixth resource for weight loss is food measuring devices. Things like food scales, measuring cups and spoons. Often we have no idea how much food we are consuming, and measuring your food if even for just a short amount of time, can shine light on why we are struggling to lose weight. Studies have shown that we overestimate our amounts of exercise and underestimate the amount of calories we consume. Now, I will be the first to admit that there's a lot more to losing weight than calories in and calories out, but calories are a factor when it comes to weight loss. If you are consuming way more than your body needs, weight loss will be a constant struggle. Another benefit of using measuring tools to track nutrition is determining if you're consuming enough. Often, people that are attempting to lose weight take their calories below the level their body needs to function optimally, and this too can hinder weight loss. A bonus resource for food measuring devices is food storage containers. I recommend glass storage containers to help store leftovers, create properly portioned meals, and store healthy meals for consumption throughout the week. The seventh and final resource for weight loss on our list is accountability. This can be in many different forms, like a workout buddy, a coach or trainer, or joining some type of membership. Getting a gym membership, signing up for some kind of group program online, or joining something like a Facebook group can help keep you accountable. Oftentimes, though, the investment isn't high enough for these memberships, and there isn't much incentive for people to use their memberships or participate in the group. Having a workout or health buddy is great just as long as they are motivated to keep you and themselves accountable. Many times, it is the people that are closest to us, our friends, family, coworkers, 
who end up sabotaging us the most. Because losing weight and taking control of your health changes you and they don't want you to change. The last form of accountability is to hire a coach. I know firsthand this works and believe that this is one of the major benefits of a personal trainer. Because if you pay $50 a month for a gym membership and don't end up going, that might not bother you too much. But if you are spending $500 a month for a personal trainer, you are more likely to show up. Having someone to keep you accountable can be a very powerful tool. I actually used an accountability coach to get this podcast up and running. I initially had the idea for this podcast almost a decade ago and even went so far as to record a few interviews, but one excuse after another and years later, still no podcast. Now I would like to clarify that this was an accountability coach, not a podcast coach, not a business coach, an accountability coach who I hired just to keep me accountable to getting this podcast up and running. And this worked so well for me that I hired another accountability coach for season two. You can learn from an accountability partner or coach and they can help you identify your blind spots and make the process achieving your goals require less trial and error. You now have seven resources for weight loss, which are the body weight scale, body fat measurements, the tape measure, photos, food measuring devices, food storage containers, and a form of accountability. Using these resources together can provide you with a wealth of information that can help guide your weight loss plan. Remember, don't let these tools negatively affect you emotionally and use the data they provide in an intelligent way to help develop and adjust your weight loss plan. Hopefully, you utilize some or all of these resources to reach your weight loss goal. And if you are using all these tools and still struggling to lose weight, don't give up. Continue the search for the information you need to be successful, which may include listening to some of the other episodes on this podcast. And with that said, this is Coach Strick saying thanks for listening. And remember, when calories in, calories out doesn't work, that, my friend, is a calorie conundrum. This podcast, including Coach Strick and guests, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects for the use of any information contained herein. Coach Strick and or guests may recommend products or services in which they have a direct or indirect financial interest. To find out more, please visit www.calorieconundrum.com.